the group I'm introducing is Ludicrous Speed. Uh, I don't really know where the name came from. It just kind of appeared. Uh, <laughs> Well, space balls, yes, but why we use it, I don't know. <laughs> so, um, starting on the left here, or I guess you're right, we have uh, Mark, yeah. Jai, Money, David, and I'm Andre. Uh, the game we will be demoing for you today is uh, a game called Night Sky Navigators. Uh, we made this game with the intention of having a uh, 3D multiplayer Asteroids game. So if you remember the old Asteroids on your Atari or whatever, that was the original idea. Um, since then, it evolved a little. We found it was much more fun to kill each other than to destroy rocks. Uh, so it's a whole lot of that, and there are still some rocks out there, but they're, they're not the focus. So uh, how are we doing? All right, so uh, we're going to choose some volunteers from the audience to join us here. Uh, yeah, raise your hand, all of you. Come on, you all want to play. All right, we got one, we got one. Did, did someone choose the second one? That guy, all right. Can actually see who you are. So, so this is our main page. Uh, what you see here is a, there's a handful of menus. There's an optional screen. Um, we have a server set up as a dedicated server on one of these machines, I don't know which one. And right here we're going to connect to the IP as soon as the server is ready to go. Ready guys? Start it up. I love the music, I really do. Okay, so right, what you see here, oh the alignment. Right here we can look around. We haven't yet spawned a ship. It's very simple to do so. You simply uh, select a ship. And boom! The ship can move around in space by using the right mouse button. Uh, it's fairly simple to control once you get the hang of it. Uh, we did not go for a flight simulator style. It's not like a point simulator. You just aim where you want to go and click the button and you'll go there. Uh, Guy right here is demonstrating in combat. It's uh, kind of fast pace and incredibly high pressure. So uh, if you're not quite ready for it, perhaps you can get uh, some close friends first. Um, if you notice on the bottom right, we have uh, part of our HUD. You see your life, your yellow meter is your energy, the uh, weapons that you use, and your boost, and your shield, and all your other things require some amount of energy to use. If you don't have enough energy, it'll be grayed out in the bottom left. Uh, in addition, you'll see the radar there. That uh, It's uh, similar to the Counter-Strike style radar, and uh, there's another hang of it. It's really handy. But in front of us here, you'll see the nice bear model out in Cup's courtyard. And, uh, a special effect once it goes. <laughs> now just for fun, there's one bear model at the beginning of the game, and every time you kill it, three more spawns somewhere in the level. So uh, if you keep playing for say 15 minutes, you've got a whole heck of a lot of bears. So these are the ships that you can select. We have, uh, oh, oh well, <laughs> you'll see them in a minute I'm sure. Uh, they're all rather varied. Uh, he just launched some mines there. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. So we have... Why don't you demonstrate Fighter Squadron real quick? This ship is a concept ship. Really different than a lot of the other ones. Uh, it does not have a boost, but it's faster than pretty much everything else out there. And you'll notice that there's actually five ships. Uh, they have an absurd amount of guns, but can only shoot forward, unlike other ships, which most of them can shoot on the direction of the absurds, however you like to look at it. Um, what's really interesting about the squadron here is that if you manage to clip just one, or if someone shoots just one, you'll continue flying around with reduced firepower and reduced life. So it's a really interesting gameplay managing your life, because this ship is generally slightly more powerful than everything else when you have all five fighters, but it's far weaker if you only have one. Uh, what are we going for? The UFO is a fun ship. Uh, the concept one behind this is a whole lot of energy weapons. You'll notice his energy on the right is straining very, very rapidly. That means he can deliver a very large payload, but uh, it's pretty well done. Uh, in addition, 
addition, all ships can do things like activate their shields. It's got another piece there, I guess. Uh, the shields will act as a uh, stop point on losing life. So if you get hit, then you can have your shield before it goes into life. Uh, in addition, they have bombs. Another interesting ship. Uh, this one's kind of a well-balanced one, very fast for a, for a larger style ship. Uh, he's, uh, right in front of him is an AI ship. Uh, we chose to implement the AI after we decided we wanted to blow people up more than asteroids, and it turned out to be really neat. Um, they're quite challenging if you don't know how to fight them correctly because they pretty much never miss. <laughs> But uh, if you know how to dodge and swerve, then you, you end up facing up pretty well. So you'll notice if uh, Jai goes ahead and flies outside for a moment, that uh, you'll see the starscape around. We have a handful of nebulas that we uh, borrowed from NASA, uh, <laughs> and they hold up as a pretty nice scenery. Uh, the way we did that is simply a small box that's just right around your ship, but since Z-buffering is off, it draws behind it. And if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. It's just really kind of neat. Uh, let's see. So, I believe we have not yet demonstrated mines completely. Do you want to go ahead and launch a volley of mines real quick? Boom! A bunch of mines. Anyone hits those, they're in pretty deep trouble. Uh, there are both combat AI ships and non-combat AI ships uh, who do a variety of things. Uh, what you see in front of them there is a waypoint. Uh, waypoints have a variety of uses. In this deathmatch mode, a waypoint will just reveal your energy. So if you play enough of them, you're really pretty much unstoppable. Uh, if you're playing other modes, the waypoints act as uh, race markers or uh, we uh, have a force system with waypoints too. But wasn't really all that fun, so we had to get out of it. Uh, you'll notice that when rockets and other things go ahead and hit the uh, platform gun, shoot the platform. You'll notice that when things hit, oh, you're still rocket. Oh, there you go. Ah, uh, well, there's lighting effects. Once again, you choose a ship with lasers. <laughs> lasers don't make lighting effects, they make big blowing up. cruiser-style ships. Uh, these were built by David's brother-in-law, Ronan, and uh, they're just really spectacular models. Uh, this one is 12,000 models, and uh, it's just a real boon to our group to have such a talented artist uh, working with us. Right here you see the scoreboard. Um, in this level you can see your <laughs> kills, you can see your deaths, and you can see who was responsible for both of them. Uh, let's see, what else have we got? The uh, engines are, whoa, really cool. Sweet! That's a feature. Awesome! Fantastic! Alright, so we're going to take this opportunity to uh, demonstrate... Uh, exactly. David, do you want to switch computers here? Okay, so we're going to take this opportunity to uh, demonstrate one of the tools we made while uh, making this game, and it's really handy to have, uh, basically all those particle effects that you saw, the explosions and the, the other varied things that were there, uh, we wanted to make a lot of these, and we wanted them to all be different. If you noticed, every single ship had a completely different explosion. Uh, all the weapons had a completely different explosion. Uh, some of them are, are kind of normal, and other ones are really, really, really odd. Uh, <laughs> so right here, we're gonna demonstrate the power of this tool, it was really handy. We, we just made it one day and wow. <laughs> so I'm sure you saw this one, our gummy bear explosion. There's a, a whole handful of others. Uh, 
you can change the colors of things, you can change sizes, speeds, uh, durations. Uh, go ahead and try and normalize it just for the fun of it. Or There we go, we have a smoke effect. Do the smoke ring. Oh, you can have uh, different blending methods included in, uh, in the thing. <laughs> really an odd way to do it for all practical purposes, but if you want it, it's there. Then uh, all these files can be saved and loaded from uh, just a folder and in-game while programming. All we had to do was save the file name and that's what happened. It's all right. I think we, uh, we got the utility out of that. How are we doing on time? Just out of curiosity. Great. So uh, why don't you go ahead and start up the game again. So, uh, you'll, once again, we're going to demonstrate the explosions here, and oh, all right, cool. <laughs> once again, we're going to demonstrate the explosions. So David's going to crash into something, and you'll see how uh, how much fun it is. Oh well, first he's going to kill the bear again. Or, bomb. or die. That green blobish thing is the remainder of his ship. It's quite a lot of fun, actually. Once again, they take about five minutes to make, and they're just kind of really fun. And there's nothing quite so satisfying as blowing up your friends. I recommend it sometimes. Uh, not in real life. Alright, so David, why don't you go and uh, play for real for a moment, and uh, have some fun. That wasn't playing for real, I think. <laughs> Either that or you're just really bad at this game. Once again, it has a high learning curve, I think. Uh, it's quite nice. So the boost that he's using is active so long as you keep moving in a straight direction. The second you turn, you slow down again. Really handy for getting away or to an opponent and then you break tightly. Wow, you are terrible at this game. Are you in our group? I, I don't understand. <laughs> Once again, the waypoints recharge energy. I don't know if you can get enough of them to make yourself truly invincible, but you can come pretty darn close. Uh, you want to destroy a couple of the bears? And uh, so, what he's going to demonstrate next is... No, next, die. Alright, hurry up and crash. Ship 4. Alright. This ship, this ship we just kind of threw in there and didn't really know what to do with. It's called the ninja ship. Because <laughs> it's really, really, really hard to see. It does not show on radar. And uh, it can kill you in one hit. However, it is balanced, because it doesn't have any shields. Thus, if anyone does manage to spot you, you're pretty much dead instantaneously. So, kill somebody, David. You're really terrible at this. <laughs> this level was originally a maze level, and we ended up taking out some walls just for to open it up and make it more fun to blow each other up and all right so while he finishes up i'm going to go ahead and thank a couple of other people who were an integral part of this project uh, ronan shana for most of the models you see here with the exception of a couple uh mark here made one of the cruisers and uh we got a couple of models from other places uh, we'd like to thank todd here in the audience for uh, making the bear model Tony the 
this tiger who, uh, if you look really closely, you might be able to spot him, but I, I don't think you'll see him. Uh, he was our original model for this game. So before we had any spaceships or any platforms or anything really cool, uh, we had Tony the Test Tiger. And if you look at that ship's texture, it happens to be oddly tiger-striped and kind of weird-looking. <laughs> so, Tony's still alive. He just got uh, splattered onto the spaceship in a funny sort of way. Um, let's see. Thomas Allen is our lead play tester. He was uh, a great help in debugging the uh, game. Games uh, at www.games.dc for a handful of direct exit tutorials that got started right away. Uh, the tech crew here, who are all in the background, you don't see them, but they've done so much to get this really cool demo together. And uh, the other students, CSC 125, being awesome. Way to go, guys. Wow. <laughs> and uh, everyone here, thank you very much.